Texas for Rio Grande cichlids. I, we're tying them up a little lighter tonight using some bead chain instead of lead eyes as you don't really want to hit the bottom if you're fishing in the canals in New Orleans. You're just going to come up with some sludge. So this will keep it a little bit above that bottom level and hopefully in the Rio strike zone a little longer. Um, this is a pretty basic fly. I was mentioning to Brian, it's very similar to the uh, carpet bomb he did a couple of months ago. Kind of a, another Matt Bennett fly, a uh, kind of downsized version of it. Uh, meant with a little, I guess for a little more finesse than those smaller fish. But to get started, just go ahead, hook in the vise, start your thread, just a couple wraps right behind the eye. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to tie in our bead chain eyes on top of the shank. Just using cross wraps till we have it secured. Uh, if you want to use super glue when you're done to hold it in place, go for it. Um, I, I don't always because I'm as apt to throw something like this at a carp as well. And I've been convinced enough times over that carp do not like the smell of super glue, UV resin, or any other adhesive. So I just avoid them. That's what it is. <laughs> Gotta have an excuse. <laughs> so yeah, I tied my eyes on I, about one hook eye, maybe two hook eyes behind the actual uh, beginning of the shank. So it doesn't need to be too big of a gap up there. And I promise this will be the hardest part of this whole fly. Right. Uh, yeah, so he, I know Matt Bennett on his, regardless of the color he chooses for the fly body, uses just small black lead eyes. So when I've done it to make it lighter, I just use the black bead chain. Um, really just anything that's not too flashy. It's not an overly flashy fly. Uh, you know, this... The dubbing we're using in this case has a little bit of a sparkle to it, but in general, just needs to look kind of like a damselfly, something similar scooting along the bottom. So once those eyes are on, go ahead and just continue your thread base back to about the bend of the hook. Doesn't have to be perfect, we're just covering it up shortly anyways. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and take one of our two uh, little marabou tufts we have, kind of pinch it between your fingers, and try to measure out the tips so they're about equal to the shank length on your hook. So measure it out, something like that. Once I've done that, I'm going to switch it to my other hand, and I'm going to secure it right at that bend. And we can just wrap forward a little bit, and we'll trim off all the butt ends to start off. Who makes this marabou? This like painted is it Montana Fly Company or uh, this? Multiple I mean, this is Orvis brand oh, right yeah, here. Okay. Yeah, that, just what I could get in town. So they carry it in I don't know a dozen colors okay. or something. So once I've got it secured, whatever's kind of just sticking forward the butt ends, I'll trim off. So are you going down the band a little bit? I, once I have it secured, yep. Okay. So gotcha. So as David was just asking, once you have it kind of secured, go ahead and do a few wraps holding the marabou in your left hand or non-dominant hand and wrap the thread a couple times down the bend trying to keep the marabou on top. And what that's going to do is while this fly is riding hook shank down on the bottom, that little tuft of marabou is going to stick up in the air and move around a little bit. I kind of got behind, so okay. I'm this far. Okay, so take that in your hand, okay. hold the tips okay. like that, and you want to measure to the length of your hook shank. Okay. Once you've done that, go ahead and switch hands and tie that length in right at the bend of the hook okay. with the fibers pointing backwards. So this is going to be your tail. Those fibers off. Okay. Well, you're going you're gonna to tie them in. Those fibers are going to be your tail coming off the back of the fly. Okay. So. I don't know if I'll adjust my angle, if it's easier to see on the screen like that. Is that better, Joe? Okay. 
So it's a tail coming off the back. So we're tearing. Nope. You don't nope, tie it. Just tie it in there. We'll wrap it to the shank, and then we'll cut the butt ends free once we have it secure. Nope. You're you're good. Right, yep. So you'll wrap it, wrap it along that bend a little bit, and that way it's going to, the fly is going to ride hook point up, so your marabou will point up a little bit. It won't be right on the bottom parallel with the shank. And then cut it off. Yep, the part in front, yes. The, yeah, the, the tag ends, the butt ends can be cut off. So it looks like everyone's getting to that point. Next step, you should each have a piece of copper wire. Uh, that's a small size ultra wire. I believe Matt's pattern in olive originally calls for chartreuse, but I could not for the life of me find anyone with small chartreuse ultra wire locally. So we're gonna go with copper for ours. And we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna tie that in along the top of the shank and leave that long end extending off the back. Uh, this is, we're gonna use this as ribbing as we move forward with this fly, but honestly this is enough copper wire for three, four, five of these. I just didn't want to break small pieces and not be able to find them on the table. Where did you, where'd you get the copper wire? Uh, this came from Orvis in town. Uh, Cabela's carries it too sometimes, but all of their threads and wires are very hit or miss is what I've found. I just don't carry it. Yeah. And once we have the wire in, we want to start off with our thread pretty much back at the bend at the base of our tail. And we're going to go ahead and create a dubbing noodle with the uh, <coughs> olive and brown ice dub that David passed out. So if you have some wax, it's not a bad idea to wax your thread with this stuff. The synthetic dubbings don't always make a really good noodle. If not, you can make do. I'll pass this around if you want to try it. This stuff is probably older than a few people in the room, and I still have some left. And you want to pass that around, Brian? Anyone yeah. needs it? Cool. How big should the dubbing noodle be? Just tiny? Um, two and a half inches is probably okay. You're only going to dub up to just behind the eyes. So once we have our dubbing noodles on our thread, we're just going to go ahead and wrap all the way forward to just behind our bead chain eyes.
reach out is with any kind of taper or just a flat or I, I, I don't think it makes a, a huge difference it's going to be it's going to be under a wing in the end so it's just to add a little flash and fill out the body slightly I tend to keep most things I do for Rios pretty sparse they don't seem to like big flies when I throw them at them So once we've gone ahead and dubbed our hook shank, we want to counter wrap with our wire. So effectively just wrap the opposite direction your thread has been going and create a rib. It can be you know, three, four sections depending how you feel like wrapping it. It is not a massive difference. I don't think fish are counting body segments on our made up damselflies. Just wrap it to the front of your dubbed body, secure with the thread, and just twist and pop any excess off. Everybody have their uh, abdomen rib done these now? Good to go. All right, so next step, you should each have two sections of rubber leg. Go ahead and tie them in along the near side of the shank at their midpoint. So about 50% forward, 50% facing back, right behind your bead chain eyes. So just hold them to the side and do one or two wraps to secure them in place. Yep. Yep. Tie both. Tie both in. I'm actually. I'm just following the way Matt Bennett does this in his video for his. So he he ties them on the same side of the hook, just midway to start out. You're tying them right behind the bead chain. Right behind the bead chain. Yep. So two, so. two, yeah, two facing forward, two facing back. All right. Uh, so right now we're just tying them in at the midpoint. Along here you go. Can you see on the? So we will eventually pull them back along the other side and secure. So instead of tying in a leg on each side, the way Matt Bennett does it is he just ties them all on one side and then pulls them over and secures on the other side, pulling them back. Tie them in the middle. On the side facing you, And these legs are probably longer than we need. Just the way they cut in half, we'll trim them to whatever length you guys want once we're done with the fly. So if we tie them on the side. Tie, tie them on the side nearest to you. And once we've all done that, we'll take the two front facing pieces. We will pull them to the side of the fly away from us and we'll secure them with thread over there. So now you'll have two back facing legs for each side of your fly. 
if that makes sense to you. If not, I can try to get a better image of it on screen. Works pretty good. It really does. Yeah. Seven. Sets going back, yep. going back and up. All four will face to the rear. All four will be facing to the rear once you pull them yeah, back to the other side. And we'll go ahead and once we have those secured, we can actually pull those legs back and we can put a little more dubbing ahead of them and that's going to help force them that direction for you. So if you take those legs, you can, well, I'll dub first before I do that. I don't have three hands. So we'll go ahead and make another little dubbing uh, noodle on our thread. We'll pull those legs all to the back and we'll just build up a little bit more of a dubbed body in front there. I say, so now you have four legs all angled to the back, two on each side. Do you have enough, Joe? He needs more. Yeah, we got plenty. We've got, we've got, I, I think we're okay. I just, huh? I just piled high the first thing. <laughs> he likes them thick. All right. How's everybody doing on that step? So at this point, we're going to tie in our wing. So if you have a vise that will rotate, go ahead and rotate your hook in the vise. Uh, if you don't, you'll have to flip your hook in the vise. So you want to be in front of the eyes. Yep, and then we'll wrap our thread just in front of the eyes. Once we've done that, we're going to take that second tuft of marabou we have and we're going to measure out a wing. So we want our wing, we're going to tie it in in front of the eyes. We want it to extend to roughly the hook point, just beyond the hook point. So we'll measure that out. And we'll go ahead and tie that in right in front of the eyes. I like to pull the butt ends on this one back and make a few wraps ahead of it. This will make it easier for you to trim those butt ends off without crowding your eye with fibers. So just kind of lift it back and make a few wraps. And you can hold that right in the air and just trim the butt ends off. Careful not to take your wing with it. Once you've done that, just go ahead and build a thread head between your bead chain and your hook eye. And flex seal, UV resin, whatever you'd like after you whip finish. And the last thing we'll have is just to kind of trim things to length.
gotten refusals from fish from blue. Um, I've heard that too. I, supposedly it's a thing with carp. I, I yeah. can't say. I'm sure there were plenty of other reasons carp refused my offerings. So. <laughs> We'll tie a few things that look very similar to this just on like uh, SL45 bonefish hooks for carp and mm. they work. Mm -hmm. uh, carp bitter or carp bomb like you've done before. Mm -hmm. They're all very close to the same fly. Yeah. All right. So once we've whip finished, only other thing you're going to need to do with this fly is trim your legs to your desired length. So one rule with any panfish I would trim it no longer than the bend of the hook. If you've got long straggling legs and they can grab them without actually getting hooked, they will find a way to. I've also found with these that if you tr trim them longer than the hook, they'll just get like caught in the hook. That, so that will happen as well, yes. Yeah. Start to twist up on themselves. Yeah. Rio patterns too, they call for that shore the better. Yes, yep. Yeah, they, they will just grab your legs and leave you rather upset by the end of the day. What did you catch your Rios on this spring, Brian? Uh, yeah, something similar to this. I can't remember. Probably one of these, yeah. I mean, okay. I've fished a lot towards the end of the spring, early summer for everything. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Some of them on a soft tackle or just like a bead head. I don't know. I was fishing one canal that was like a drainage ditch and AJ's clear water, yeah, by the shop, and you could see them down there like an aquarium. But mm -hmm. if you got something smaller, I don't know. I think they could see me up there, so kind of suspicious. But yeah, it's great. Just yeah, sit the tail low most of the time. <laughs> user error. Yeah. And there are always ways you can cheat when it comes to getting things to sit the right way. You can make a slightly thicker wing to offset it, or you can use what uh, Jay Zimmerman, the guy who does the carp book, he, he describes what he calls lift kits, where yes. effectively you use a piece of monofilament or lead lined up under you. Well, no, it, it effectively it, it increases the distance of your lead eyes from the hook shank, so the lead eyes have more of an effect. Uh, so, so, so you can. Again with the mono, how it work? So if you take a take the hook, put it in your vise shank up, uh -huh. tie it right along the top of the shank, and it oh, extends it extends the distance from your source of weight, your lead eyes, oh, and the actual fly. Okay. So doing so means you can use a lighter weight and mm -hmm. still keep it oriented the correct direction. Mm -hmm. Good, good uh, Sandy Creek fly, right? What size is, Chris, you're fish is this? Uh, What's that? What size hook is this? Uh, I am fishing this without. This is okay. generally it's sight fishing. It's so this is throwing it in front of a fish you see and slowly yeah, stripping it in. I guess put it up already. Yep. Hey, what, what size? That's a 10, right? This is a, yeah, it's size 10, size uh, 10 B10S right? Stinger from Gamakatsu. I think Bennett ties it anywhere from a 14 up to an 8 or so, depending, and you can use really any all-purpose, you know, 2x length must-add hook you might have as well at home. I just like the hook gap on the B10S stingers a little more, and thankfully had enough for a group of 12 of us. Any questions? Somebody going to run across the street and catch something on it before the sun goes down? <laughs> kind of cool. That was a great. That was a great pattern. It's easy to tie. It looks awesome. That's yeah, that, that like barred it. mirror looks really good. Oh yeah. Pick up more of that. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. It's really small packs, unfortunately, but it is really nice material. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, they're all like yeah, these are like pretty, they have to like paint by hand. Yep. Or whatever. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, you can, I, you, 
there there's ways there's ways to do it where you could clip in sections and avoid cutting the tips off the ones on the edges. I, I did not tonight because yeah, this is this is pretty wasteful. I'll use these to like dub a body on something now. So, like I'll I'll tie this in and wrap it around a hook shank instead of doing dubbing for a pattern. That's what I tend to use these leftovers for, because otherwise it would be extremely wasteful. This one you could rip. Right, you pull the middle. Some of this off and use it for a wood plug or two. It just depends on the piece. Yep. Yeah, like sometimes if it's, if it's too thin, it won't rip, but if you can rip it, yeah, you can reuse it. Yeah. Bunch of these. Might as well throw some foam. There you go. I haven't. 